Good morning. We are working on 11.1, .1, um, solving quadratic equations by the square root property. First of all, I'm going to talk about what a quadratic equation is. It's ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Um, when you have a quadratic equation in standard form, that means that your ax squared plus bx plus c is on one side of the equation and it's equal to zero. We always want a to not be equal to zero because if it was, then there would be no quadratic um, term, which would make this a linear equation. Um, we are going to talk about um, so, um, solving quadratic equations using the zero factor property. What the zero factor property means is when you have two numbers multiplied together and you get zero, well, one of the variables or one of the numbers has to be zero. So that's what the zero factor property means. So what we're going to do today is we're going to solve each of the equations using the zero factor property. In order to do that, we do have to use the AC method in order to factor A. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to solve 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 um, by using the AC method. Alrighty, so let me go ahead and do this real quickly. All right, so when you are doing the AC method, the AC method means just that. You're looking for the A value, the B value, and the C value. My A value is 2 times my C value is 1. When you multiply those two things together, you get 2. That is your targeted number. Okay, so I like to write that out. So 2 is your targeted number. What you're going to do is you're going to find two factors when multiplied together that give you 2. But when added together, give you this middle term. And the middle term is negative 3. So I like to put a little um, bubble around this. It lets you know that that is my targeted number. Well, I know that, let me change colors real fast. I know that negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2. I know that negative 2 plus a negative 1 is also negative 3. Now, when you have two numbers, when multiplied together give you two, because that's our targeted number. And then you also have those two numbers, when added together, give you the coefficient of your middle term. So because we found them, we know that we just now found our two factors. Remember, when you, you are using the AC method, you write down the first term, and the first term is 2x squared. You write down the last term, which is a positive 1. And remember, it's equal to zero, okay? What I like to do is I like to put a crazy plus sign in the middle. Because basically what you're doing is you are taking this equation and you're just spreading it out. Now, I don't care which number you use, either the negative two or the negative one. Does not matter whatsoever. So this is going to be negative two. And the variable, whatever the variable is of your middle term, you're going to put it here. Then you're going to have negative 1x here. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to just make sure that we did this correctly. This is your first term. This is your last term. These two red terms, when added together, give you negative 3x. And it does because that's your middle term. Now, when you have four terms, you solve it by grouping. So you're going to factor it by grouping. I'm going to grab these two together, and I'm going to grab these two together. Okay? So now, on this one here, I look and see what they both share. They both share a 2x. Okay? Now, because they both share a 2x, we do have to do a little bit of math. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times a negative 1 is a negative 2x. So we factored the first parentheses completely. Now, on the other side, you guys, if this is a negative, it's going to be negative here, always. Whatever the sign is here, that's what the sign here is. These two only share a 1, so I'm going to take out a 1. Now, 
from here, you don't have to do anything. You just, you don't even, you just write it down. Whatever's inside this parenthesis, you're going to put in over here. Okay. And don't forget it's equal to zero. All right. Now what you have to do is you have to look and see what each one of those share. Basically, they both share what's inside the parentheses. So they both share an X minus one. And since they both share an X minus one, you are going to, if this is crossed out, you're left with two X. If this is crossed out, you're left with a negative one. And then once again, don't forget equal to zero. So now we're going to use the zero factor property. The zero factor property says this. One of these has to be equal to zero. So what you're going to do is you're going to set this equal to zero. So X minus one equals zero or two X minus one equals zero. Okay. And your goal is to get X by itself. So this one's easy. We just add one to both sides and you get X equals one. Or then on the other side, only because I'm running out of room, I'm going to add one to both sides, really small. It's going to leave me with 2x equals 1. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and x is going to equal 1 half. So my two answers are x equals 1 half or x equals 1, and that is it. All right, so those are both solutions. Um, now let's look at letter B. Letter B, they still want you guys to factor this um, using the zero factor property, which means we're going to end up having to actually factor it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to move over the 25 because I remember I have to get it equal to zero. So I get X squared minus 25 equals zero. Now what I want you guys to do is, if you notice, you can square root x squared. You can square root 25. They're both separated by a minus sign. That is known as a difference of squares. Because they're a difference of squares, I know that it's going to look like this. One's going to be a plus sign. One's going to be a minus sign. The square root of x squared is x. So my first term is x. The square root of 25 is 5, so my last term is going to be 5. Now, we got to use the zero factor property. We're going to get set both of these equal to 0. So we have x plus 5 equal to 0, or x minus 5 equals to 0. So your goal right now is to get x by itself, so we're going to minus 5 from both sides. My first answer is going to be negative 5, or my second answer is going to be 5. And that's it. So first, when you're solving quadratic equations, and they want you to use the zero factor property, all you have to do is factor them. Using the AC method is the best way to do this. And I'm actually going to write that up here. That's the, um, that's the kind of method that that is going to be. Okay. And um, let me get rid of that little equal sign. That's the easy method. And let me just circle this real fast. Now, I do want you to know letter B, example 1B, it could have been used by solving with square roots. And that's what we're going to work with today. So when you are solving with square root property, what's nice about it, and I want you guys to read over this, Please read all the notes as you guys are working through here. I'm just going to go over the examples with you. Sometimes examples are just easier to deal with than reading through all the works. And also our videos would be a 10 times longer. Um, so on letter or number 2A, it says the square root of, or x squared equals 49. In order to get rid of a square, you want to square root it. So when you are solving quadratic equations by using square roots, the goal is this. You want to get the x squared all by itself. Normally, when you solve quadratic equations by um, using square roots, it's because you have, a con you have a constant 
and you have a quadratic term. Your linear term doesn't exist. If you did have a linear term, you would not solve it by using square roots. So on letter A, to get rid of the x squared is already by itself, so you don't have to worry about anything. What you're going to do is you're going to get x squared by itself. So first of all, I'm going to rewrite it just so that you guys have um, the actual problem and then problem that we're going to work on. So in order to get rid of an x squared, you are going to square root both sides. Okay, so you get x equals. Now, you do have to always remember, you're going to have two answers. So you must put the plus or minus. And the square root of 49 is 7. And you're done. So your answer would be 7 or x would be negative 7. I don't care if you write it out like this or you could also write it out like this. Okay, all three of these mean the same answer. Letter B. Letter B, once again, I want to get rid of the squ x squared. So let me write it down just for a second so that we have an actual answer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to square root both sides, okay? So I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 12. Now the square root of 12 is not a perfect square root. However, we can use some scratch work over here. I know that the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 12. Remember, whatever's under the radicals can be multiplied together. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 12. The square root of 4 is 2, and you can't square root 3. So my answer on this one's going to be plus or minus 2 square roots of 3. And so this could be an answer. Chances are they have the answer written like this in the homework when you guys are doing the homework problems, okay? Um, you have a positive 2 square roots of 3 and a negative 2 square roots of 3. Now on letter C, if you notice the x squared is not by itself, so I need to move the 90 over, okay? So I get 2x squared equals 90. Now, I need to divide both sides by 2, and the reason why is my x squared is not by itself. So you get x squared equals, now, this is very important. Well, it's just 45, so I'm going to put 45 here. 90 divided by 2 is 45. Once again, I need to get rid of the square, so I'm going to square root both sides, and I get x equals, now don't forget, plus or minus the square root of 45. Now, remember, the square root of 45 can be simplified. 9 times 5. The square root of 9 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 45. The square root of 9 is 3, but you cannot square root 5, so it stays under the radical. So your actual answer is plus or minus 3 square roots of 5. So that would be your answer. All right, let's get this one done before I run out of time. All right, so you guys, on this one here, I got to get the 3x squared by itself. So I'm going to add both sides by 8. I got to move over the constant. So I get 3x squared equals 96. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I get x squared equals, I believe that is 32. So just like what we did earlier, your goal is to get x squared by itself, so you're going to square root both sides. You get x equals, don't forget, plus or minus the square root of 32. Now, I do know I can, re I can reduce the square root of 32. I might as well just do it right here because I'm going to run out of room. I know that the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 32. The square root of 16 is 4, but I can't square root 2. So my answer is going to be x equals plus or minus 4 square roots of 2. And you're finished. Remember, you have two answers, a positive and a negative. All right. You guys have a great day. Let me go ahead and... Um, Turn this off for just a second.